So, question 21. It says that in Cow's pencil case there are 9 pencils. At least one of them is blue, and in any groups of 4 pencils, at least 2 have the same color. In any groups of 5 pencils, at most, 3 have the same color. So what does it mean? It means that the first statement tells us that if in any of groups of 4 people, at least 2 have the same color. It means that there can't be 4 different colors which means that the maximum number of colors is three. Because if there are four colors, then, well, the four of them can't be guaranteed to have the same color with at least two of them, right? And it says that in any groups of five pencils, at most, three have the same color which means that the maximum number of pencils in each color is also three. Otherwise, I can't guarantee that, well, they are just at most three of them have the same color because I can definitely pick four of a kind in any groups of five, right? Because it says any group. So in the end, we can see that if the maximum number of colors is three and the maximum number of pencil in each color is three, three times three is equal to nine, which means that all the three colors would have three pencils in each of them. So three pencils are blue. All right. And for question 22, Lewis drives uh, from London to Brighton at an average speed of 60 miles per hour. On the way back, he gets stuck in traffic and his average speed is only 40 miles per hour. What is his average speed for the whole journey? So that is a very, very subtle question. So let's say um, he's taking a time of t on his way. So it means that the distance is going to be 60t. And on his way back, because his speed is 40 miles per hour. So his time will be 60t divided by 40, which is 1.5t. But of course, like if it is a decimal, it would be nastier when we are calculating it. But that's the idea. So we need to find the time, like the relative time between um, the two journeys first. So that can be, that can still be calculated because the total time that it's taken is going to be t adding 1.5t, which is 2.5t. That's the total time. And the total distance is 60t divided by, uh, times 2, which is 120t. So if I'm dividing 120t by 2.5, that's going to be equal to 48. So the answer is going to be c. All right. And then, question 23. In the addition sum below, A and B and C stands for different digits. What is the value of them? So this is a number puzzle question. You can see that C and B adds up to something ending with A. B and C adds up to 4. A and A adds up to C. So these are the three columns. Because I have the same addition in the units and the tens places, so we can try different possibilities whether there are carryovers or not, right? So first of all, let's imagine there's no carryover for B adding C, which means that B adding C is 4. Then A is going to be 4. So A adding A is 4 adding 4, which is 8. So C is going to be 8. So if 8 is adding something and it becomes a 4 exactly without carryover, it's impossible. Right? It's impossible. So it means that there has to be a carryover. And with a carryover for any one digit numbers adding together, the carryover is a maximum of one. Which means that B adding C has to be 13. Such that when I am adding the one for the carryover, it goes to four. Right? So if B adding C is equal to 13 and A is three, so it means that I have 
3 and 3 there. And this is 13, which means C is going to be 7. So A is 3, C is 7, B is 6. And the question is just looking for the sum, which means that I just need to add A to B adding C, and that's going to be 16. All right. And then for question 24, the lengths of three adjacent sides of a quadrilateral are equal. The angle between the first and the second side is 60 degrees, and the angle between the second and the third side is 100 and degrees. Uh, is 100 degrees. What is the largest angle of the quadrilateral? So it means that the first and second one goes with 60 degrees. The second and the third one goes with 100 degrees. That's that. Maybe something like that. 100 degrees. So, how would you find the last one remaining? If this is also equal. So basically, we can try to construct a diagram there. So let's say this is uh, L. Put it larger. And this is also L after the 60 degree angle. And then I can definitely try to connect these two edges such that we know these two angles are both 60s, right? Because any uh, equilateral triangle with an, uh, any isosceles triangle with an angle of 60 degrees has to be an equilateral triangle. So it means that I just need an extra 40 degrees there and the same length L to form the remaining shape. So for a top angle of 40 degrees, the base angles are going to be 70 degrees. So the largest angle of this quadrilateral is going to be this one, which is 60 degrees, adding 70 degrees, and that's going to be 130 degrees. All right, so this one might be slightly harder because you need to imagine what's going on there, right? So the last question uh, is question number 25. It says that the whole numbers from one to 2016 are written on a blackboard. Morris underlines all the multiples of two in red, all the multiples of blue, and all the multiples of four, it, uh, all the multiples of three in blue, and all the multiples of four in green. So how many numbers does Morris underline exactly twice? So we can calculate this by a Venn diagram with three quantities in it. So basically, this can represent the twos, multiples of twos, this can represent the multiple of threes, and this can represent the multiples of fours. Yep. And all those going into these sections would be the ones that are counted twice, right? Does it make sense? So first of all, let's try to find out how many lines uh, will be underlined three times, which means how many lines are the multiples of two, three, and four. And the reason why we do that is to find out what's in the middle such that we can easier calculate the remaining ones. So for the lowest common multiple of 2, 3, and 4, it is 12. Now, if I'm dividing 2016 by 12, well, might need to take a little bit of time. If I'm dividing 2016 by 12, in this case, I'm just going to use the calculator. It's going to be 168, which means that I have got 168 numbers in there. Alright, and then 
I'm just trying to look for these three zones. First of all, for two and three together, uh, it's going to be six, right? Like the lowest common multiple was six. But then I want it to be uh, underlined by two and three, but not four, which means that I need to remove the 168 there. So for two and three, uh, I have 2016 divided by 6, and that's going to be 2 times of 168, which is 336. So 336 removing 168 is just 168, right? Now it goes to 3 and 4. Well, we know that 3 and 4 has a lowest common multiple of 12, so it means that all the multiples of 12... Um, has to be colored by the twos as well. So it means that there is no number which is just a multiple of three and four, but not two. But then of course, there are some numbers which are just a multiple of two and four, but not three. So that's gonna be uh, two, at, well, because the lowest common multiple of two and four is going to be four. So we just need to do 2016 divided by 4, and that's going to be 504, but then we need to remove the 168, so that's 336. So now I just need to add the numbers in these two zones, 168 and 336, and that adds up to 504, so the answer is C. Okay. So that's how we can solve this problem by the principle of inclusion and exclusion. All right, so that's it for the 2016 paper. I hope you find it all right, and I will see you next time.